One added advantage of semaphore is that it can be used not only for ensuring mutual exclusion and solving critical fiction problem, but also for solving many other synchronization issues. Now we are going to discuss some of the classical problems of synchronization and how semaphores can be used to solve such synchronization issues. The first one is bounded buffer problem also called producer consumer problem. Here there is a buffer pool whose size is bounded or fixed. There are n number of buffers and each buffer can hold an item. Then there is a producer and a consumer. The producer produces items and add them to the buffer. And the consumer removes items from the buffer and consumes them. Now, what are the synchronization problems associated with this? First of all, there should be mutual exclusion. The buffer pool is shared by both the producer and the consumer. So, while one process is accessing the buffer, the other process should not access it. There should be mutual exclusion. Only one process should be allowed to enter the critical section at a time. Then, if all the buffers are filled, then the producer should not try to add an item to the buffer. That is, the overflow condition should be handled. Similarly, if all the buffers are empty, then the consumer should not try to consume items from the buffer. That is, underflow condition should be handled. Now, how to use the semaphores to handle these synchronization issues? To handle mutual exclusion, we make use of a binary semaphore named mutex and we know that to ensure mutual exclusion, the mutual mutex should be initialized with the value 1. Now to handle the other two issue, we make use of two counting semaphores, one named empty and other named full. Mutex is initialized with the value 1. If the value of mutex is 1, it means the process can enter the critical section and if the value is 0, then the process should wait. In the beginning, all the buffers will be empty. Hence, the number of empty buffers is equal to n. Thus, the semaphore empty is initialized with the value n. Now, as long as MT is having a positive value, it means the producer can add item to the buffer. Otherwise, the producer should wait. And in the beginning, the number of full buffers or filled buffers is 0. Thus, the full semaphore is initialized with the value 0. As the producer add items to the buffer, the full semaphore will be incremented, showing that the full buffers are increasing. And if the full semaphore is having a positive value, then the consumer can consume items from the buffer. Otherwise, the consumer, if the value is zero or negative, the consumer should wait. Now, this is the pseudocode for producer. The mutex semaphore is initialized to one, empty semaphore is initialized to n, and full is initialized to zero. Now, the producer produces the item, and before adding the item to the buffer, it will first perform the wait operation on empty semaphore. It will decrement the empty semaphore and if the value of empty is positive, then the producer can move on. Otherwise, the producer should wait on the empty semaphore. Then, if the value is positive, the producer will move on and to ensure mutual exclusion, it check the mutex value. If the mutex value is 0, then the producer should wait on mutex. If the value equals 1, then the producer can move on and add the item to the buffer. Now, while exiting from the critical section, the producer performs a signal function on the mutex semaphore. Here, if there is some waiting process on mutex, it will be woken up. Otherwise, the value of mutex will be incremented back to 1. 
Also, it performs the signal function on the full semaphore. The value of full semaphore will be incremented and if there is some waiting process on full semaphore, it will be woken up to. Similarly, the consumer, before removing the item from the buffer, first of all performs a wait operation on the full semaphore. If the value of full semaphore is positive, then the consumer can move on. Otherwise, it should wait on the full semaphore. And if the value is positive, to ensure mutual exclusion, to ensure that no other process is accessing the buffer, it checks the mutex semaphore to if the mutex is 0, then the consumer should wait here. If the value is 1, then the consumer can move on and remove the item from the buffer. Then while exiting from this critical section, the consumer should perform the signal function on mutex. If there is some waiting process on mutex, it will be woken up. Otherwise, the value of mutex will be incremented back to 1. Also, it performs the signal function on empty semaphore. The value of empty semaphore will be incremented and if there is some waiting process on empty semaphore, it will be woken up to. Now, let's consider an example based on the semaphore implementation which we have discussed in the last two videos. Here the buffer pool consists of three buffers and the value of n is 3. Mutex is initialized to 1, empty semaphore is initialized to 3 and full semaphore is initialized to 0. Now suppose the producer needs to add an item to the buffer. It performs a wait operation on empty semaphore. The value of empty semaphore is positive, it means the producer can move on. Now the producer will decrement the empty semaphore and move on to the next instruction. It check the mutex to ensure mutual exclusion. The value of mutex is 1 means the producer can move on to enter the critical section. Now the producer will decrement the mutex to 0 and access the critical section add the item to the buffer. Then while exiting from the critical section the producer should perform the signal function on the mutex. Since there is no any not any waiting process on mutex it will just increment the value of mutex back to 1. Then it should perform the signal function on full. Then the full semaphore is incremented and since there are no waiting process for the full semaphore, no need to wake up any process. Now we can see the value of empty semaphore is 2, means there are two empty buffers and the value of full semaphore is 1, there is one full buffer. Now let's see how mutual exclusion is guaranteed. Suppose the producer needs to produce one more item. It performs a wait operation on empty semaphore. The value of empty is positive, thus the producer can move on. It will decrement the empty semaphore. Then it check the mutex value. The value of mutex is 1 and there is no other process in the critical section. The producer can move on. It will decrement it to 0 and will access the critical section. Now while the producer is accessing the critical section, suppose the consumer is making a try to consume the item from the buffer. So the consumer first of all wait for the semaphore full. The value of full semaphore is positive, thus the consumer can move on. The full semaphore is decremented, then the consumer should check the mutex to ensure mutual exclusion. But the value of mutex is zero. The, the consumer cannot move on. It will add itself to the queue associated with the mutex semaphore and move to the blocked stage. Now the producer has finished adding item to the buffer. Then after exiting, while exiting from the critical section, first of all the producer should perform a signal function on mutex. Here it checks whether there is any waiting process on the queue. The consumer is waiting on the queue. Thus the producer will wake up the consumer and the consumer will be removed from the queue and move from the blocked state to the ready state. 
Also, the producer performs a signal function on the full semaphore. Thus, the value of full semaphore will be incremented. Then, suppose the consumer got the processor. The consumer consumed item from the buffer. After consuming the item, it will perform a signal function on mutex. Since there is no waiting process, the mutex will be incremented and it has to perform the signal function on empty semaphore too. The value of empty semaphore will be incremented since there is no waiting process, no need to wake up any process. So finally, there is one full buffer and two empty buffers. So while one process is inside the critical section, since we are making use of mutex semaphore, the, uh, it ensures mutual exclusion. Now let's see how the overflow condition is handled by the semaphore. Uh, suppose all the buffers are filled, thus the number of empty buffers is 0, empty semaphore is 0 and full semaphore is 3, mutex is 1. Then the producer is trying to produce an item and add it to the buffer. It will check the empty semaphore first. It will wait on the empty semaphore. The value of empty semaphore is zero means no process is allowed to enter thus the producer cannot move on. Thus the producer will decrement the empty semaphore to minus one and will wait on the queue associated with the empty semaphore. Then suppose the consumer is trying to consume an item. The consumer will check the full semaphore. The value is positive. Thus the consumer will decrement the value of full semaphore and can move on. It check the mutex. The mutex value is 1. Hence mutual exclusion is there. The consumer will decrement the mutex value to 0 and consume one item from the buffer. Now while exiting from the critical section, the consumer will perform a signal function on mutex. There is no waiting process on the queue, thus the mutex will be incremented. Next, a signal function will be performed on the empty semaphore. Since the value is negative, it means there is one waiting process on the queue. Thus the value will be incremented and the waiting process will be removed from the queue. Thus the producer moves from the block state to the ready state. Now the producer can move on. The producer had already done a wait operation on the full semaphore. It had already decremented the full semaphore. Now it has to check the mutex. The mutex value is 1. Thus the producer will decrement it to 0 and produce an item to the buffer. Now while exiting from the critical section, the producer will increment the mutex back to 1 and also it performs a signal function on the full semaphore. There is no waiting process on the queue, so no need to wake up any process, just increment the full semaphore. Thus, the value of full semaphore is 3. There are 3 uh, filled buffers and 0 empty buffer. This is how the overflow condition is handled. Now, what if the consumer is trying to consume the item while all buffers are empty? Here the number of empty buffers is 3 and the number of full buffers is 0, mutex is 1. Now the consumer is trying to consume an item from the buffer. It should check on, it should perform the wait operation on full semaphore. The value of full semaphore is 0, hence the consumer cannot move on. The consumer will decrement the full semaphore and wait in the queue associated with the full semaphore. Now the producer needs to produce an item. It waits on the empty semaphore. The value of empty semaphore is positive. The producer can move on. The producer will decrement the empty semaphore to 2. Then it check the mutex. Mutex equals 1. The producer will move on. It will decrement it to 0 and produce an item in the buffer. Then while exiting from the critical section, the producer will perform a signal function on mutex. There is no waiting process, just increment the mutex value. Then it should perform a signal function on the full semaphore. Here, the value is minus 1, means there is one process waiting in the queue. Thus, increment the full semaphore and 
remove the process from the queue the process will move from the block state to the ready state now the consumer will be able to execute suppose consumer got the processor then it had already done a wait operation on full semaphore there's no need to decrement it again check the mutex mutex value is 1 thus the consumer will decrement it to 0 and consume the item from the buffer while exiting it performs the signal function on mutex there is no waiting process on the queue thus increment mutex back to 1 also perform a signal function on the empty semaphore by incrementing the empty semaphore to 3 thus finally the number of empty buffers is 3 and full buffers is 0 this is how the underflow condition is handled